Abi Sabbath. Abi Sabbath, brethren. Uh, that song uh, is after the great disappointment of 1844 when uh, Christ Jesus was waited. But uh, he did not appear. So, as she has rightly sung, uh, William Mira went ahead and said, I've set my mind on another day. It is today, today, until he comes. So, thank you for that wonderful singing, and God bless you. I want to uh, draw our attention to our Bible study of this particular hour. And according to our bulletin, it is a study on the principles of personal Christian witnessing. And before then, let us pray. Laughing Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you because of this day, once again you have given us. And thank you because of this afternoon, as we study on how we are supposed to witness for you. I'm asking that you may speak through me to your children. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. Uh, principles of uh, personal Christian witnessing. And maybe if I may extend the invitation to those of us who are outside, if you can come, we will appreciate. And those who are watching online, God bless you. And I thank you for being with us. So the purpose of this study is to learn how or why witnessing is necessary. We are supposed to uh, come to appreciation why witnessing is necessary. Again, we are to learn when and how to share your spiritual insight. And again, we are supposed to know how to lead others to decide for Jesus Christ. Number four, I think that's all. And uh, the coverage, if time may allow, is uh, all about. So principle number one, it is motivating personal witnessing. Motivating personal witnessing. And the number two is a principle on Jesus' method of witnessing. How did Jesus witness during his time? And is there anything we can learn on how Jesus Christ witnessed? And principle number three, it is knowing the role of the mind in the witnessing. That is to say, when you want to witness to somebody about the love of Christ, are you able to know when they are for what you are sharing or against? And how do, we, how do you arrest, if I may use that word, their mind when you are sharing? Number four is sharing your faith. Sharing your faith. And because I know our coming to church, and by the fact that we are Seventh-day Adventist believers, we have a faith that is firmly grounded on the Word of God. So are you able to share your faith, and how can you do it? Number five, it is giving personal Bible study. How do you give a Bible study to somebody whom you want to win for Christ. And lastly, it is bringing people to decision. So those are six principles of personal Christian witnessing. Principle number one, it is motivating personal witnessing. Two, Jesus' method of uh, witnessing Number three, knowing the role of the mind in witnessing. Four, sharing your faith. Five, giving personal Bible study. And six, bringing people to decision. 
Um, so, why is Ray involvement needed? Why must we inform God's church in witnessing? Anyway, is it necessary? Why must we be informed as a church in witnessing for Christ Jesus? Why can't only church pastors and maybe leaders be the only one who are supposed to uh, do all this business? We learn from the apostles how they witnessed for Christ Jesus. How did they do it and how the church grew in the New Testament? Like when the disciples of Christ Jesus uh, gave themselves to be used as vessels for winning souls for Christ. There is a way the church of Christ grew in the New Testament. When you read in the book of, of Acts chapter 1 verse 15, I may not be able to remember so much explaining all this stuff because they are available for you if you want them uh, on a soft copy. You can see the trend on how the church of the apostles, how the church grew, and how Christ Jesus refilled or was refilled by uh, the apostles to the listeners. So, in Acts chapter 1, we find that uh, the Bible quotes 120 disciples. Acts chapter 2. 3,000 new converts. Acts chapter 4, 5,000. Acts chapter 5, more and more. Meaning the converts kept on growing. Acts chapter 6, verse 7 and verse 1. The Bible speaks of uh, increasingly growing. Acts 9, grew in numbers and so on so forth. So, why did the work progress in the New Testament? Because from the trend which I've uh, briefly read, we can just tell that the church of God kept on growing from one level to the other. Uh, when the disciples of Christ Jesus got themselves involved, in the business of winning souls for Christ. Why did they grow? The reason is simple. It is because everyone was involved in witnessing. But uh, in this particular age and era, I don't know how many of us uh, have involved themselves in winning souls for Christ. And if you want to know that uh, it is very few of us, is when you see there is no much interest uh, when it comes to uh, the study or the learning on how we are supposed to witness for Christ Jesus. So if the church of today was to grow from one level to the other, then everybody of us, each and every one of us, need to be involved in the business of soul winning. So if I may ask, what percentage of our members are involved in the witnessing activity? If somebody was to ask you, can you rate it at 8% out of 100, 60, 50, 10, or 1? What do you think? Because I'm not preaching. What do you think? If we were to rate the level of involvement of our church members in the, so, in, the, in, in, the, in the business of soul winning, at what percentage can we give ourselves? Is it at 80%, 60, 50, 10? What do you think? You may have a reflection for yourself. So, why do you think people are not involved 
If I was to ask you today, why do you think you are not personally involved in soul winning? This one, number one, it is because people lack confidence. You lack confidence. And by the way, confidence comes as a result of knowing what you are just about to share. But when you are not sure of what you are just about to share, then confidence may be uh, a vocabulary to you. Number two, there is a problem of unknown potential. That uh, we have some abilities. I know last Sabbath, pastor was sharing about the spiritual gifts. You might be having an ability, a potential, that you have not discovered by yourself. So that one can be a challenge. Uh, the reason to us why we are not really sharing uh, the messages that we have known about Christ Jesus. Number three, there are those who will say, I've never been asked to share my faith with somebody. But uh, we know God has given us the great commission as the church, which we find in the book of Matthew chapter 28, beginning verse 18 through verse 20. And uh, the amplification of the same is Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through verse 12. So if you say nobody has asked you to witness, I can confidently say that Jesus has asked all of us to witness on his course. There are those who would say, I have no training. This is why I'm standing here for those who are willing that you may just find a training for yourself. There are those who would say, I have a limited understanding of the roar. I'm supposed to pray in the church. There are those who would say that uh, I have no motivation. Nobody has ever motivated me to share some of the reasons. Yeah, no training. I want to uh, do a quote from Christian Service, page 59, where the Bible says, Men, many will be willing to work if they were taught how to begin. Like there are many of us who are very much willing to serve, but the only reason they, they are not serving it is because they have not been asked to serve. And when we talk of the limited understanding of the roles, we say this, sometimes the dissemination of the truth of God is not confined to few ordained ministers. That is, again, according to the book Christian Service, Page 68. Like the business of disseminating the truth of the word of God is not confined to the few ordained ministers. That is to say the, 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 the idea that the ministers must carry the burden and do all the work is a great mistake. That is rightly to say that uh, the work of witnessing for Christ Jesus is not confined to a few. That is the ordained ministers, pastors, and the rights. And uh, there are those who believe that the role of evangelism is the role of a church pastor and uh, not of us. And there are those who believe that the role of uh, the church membership is to support the church pastor financially that he may win souls for Christ. But I want to just say that is not true. That is a lie. It is all of us, each and every one of us, who is supposed to be involved in the business of soul winning. 
There are some hypotheses I may not be able to read here because of time. But I want to get some uh, quotation from Martin Ruther. Uh, his position on the business of soul winning. He said this, that uh, God wants to accomplish his work through the reity. The reity is when we speak of uh, the church members. We have the reity and the crutch. The crutch is the church leadership, pastors and the rights. But Martin Luther had this position that God wants to accomplish his work through the reity. And the reity is you who is listening to me. He again says this, that the Christ does not have two bodies or two different kinds of bodies. Because we understand the church is the body of Christ, is the, 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 the body of Jesus Christ. So then if Jesus has a single or one body, then all of us need to be involved in the business of soul winning. We know, we know the Great Commission from the book of Matthew 28, 19 through 20, which I have quoted already. And we know what the Bible says in the book of First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, where we are called the priesthood of believers. Where Peter said that uh, we are a chosen generation, royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that we may proclaim the praises of him who has called us from darkness into marvelous light. The body of Christ, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12, that we all belong to this body of Christ. And uh, we must use the spiritual gifts which pastor shared to you according to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 and verse 5. This is true that the first task of a church pastor within the church is to equip Teach, strengthen the reality to carry on its ministry in the world. Like one key assignment of a church pastor is to train the reality, that is the church members. He's supposed to equip them, teach, strengthen on how they are supposed to carry the road of witnessing to the world out there. Christian service, page 6 to 9, the minister should not feel that uh, it is his duty to do the talking and the laboring and all the praying. He should educate, help us in every church. So the duty, the core assignment of a church pastor is to train you on how you are supposed to witness and you remember what was shared in the morning that uh, God wants to use each and every one of us at our different, di different capacities to witness for his people. I have spoken about the role of the reality and what we are supposed to do as God is children. There is some statistics on the percentage to us which the church is growing today. And I want to quote one for Africa, which says that in East Africa and the South Mexican and the South Philippian Union and the rights. In a congregation of a thousand believers, which has one pastor, the church is growing at a percentage of 12, at 12 percent. And the growth, you can see, see it is wanting. That is why the need for total involvement is very key 
and very crucial to us, God's children. So, we said the reason to us why most of us, if not all of us, are not being involved, it is because maybe we lack some motivation. We lack some motivation. And what will motivate then our church members to witness? Number one, it is the biblical command that we get from the book of Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 through 20. That is the biblical command. And there are so many uh, Bible texts, like in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, which says, Arise and shine. For your right has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. There are so many of them. And when we read in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, where the Bible says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses, beginning where? Today, Samaria, and to the end of the uh, world. That is to say, motivation number one, it is the command which God has given us. So, God has called us as his followers, one, to be his witnesses. Number two, to be his ambassadors. Number three, participants in the ministry of reconciliation. And number four, to be co laborers Number five, to be the right and the salt of the earth. So, are you willing to be part of what I've read here? Like, God wants to use us uh, strongly as uh, different capacities, our different capacities. Like, He wants us to witness for Him, you know, in uh, so many ways that uh, we may feel that we want to be involved. I want to share something else. Jumping a lot of stuff here. But you can just find them in a soft copy. Witnessing contributes to your spiritual life. So there is, there is a study which says this. And it's a quote from Desire of Ages, page 149. That there is a relationship between witnessing and spiritual character development so if you find people who have got some defects on their spiritual life that is character wise most of them fall you know on the category of those who are not ready to witness so when you witness there is a likelihood that uh, you are character development would it be on another level so witnessing is related to the second coming of Christ Jesus so motivation number one I've said it is because God has commanded us to be involved motivation number two it is because witnessing is related to the second coming of Christ Jesus Those are two key elements you are supposed to you are supposed to remember. So uh, let me try to speak about principle number two in the next few minutes left. Uh, something to do uh, with uh, Jesus Christ's method of witnessing. How did Jesus witness? Step, step number one, he mingled with men as one who desired their good. Number two, he showed sympathy. Number three, he ministered to their needs. Number four, he harmed their confidence. And number five, he paid them for me. So that is how Jesus witnessed I may not be able to uh, remember so much explaining all those particular five ways on how Christ Jesus actually uh, 
won people to himself, but they are uh, self-explanatory in a way that uh, God wants us to follow that particular trend. Like you have to mingle with the people. You must care about what uh, uh, concerns them. And uh, you must minister to their needs. And uh, you are supposed to earn their confidence and tell them now to follow you. I want to share one last thing here. Um, which I think will help us minister effectively in the business of soul winning. Uh, there is what we call the law of reception. How we can be received effectively when we are sharing for Christ Jesus. One, when you share a meal with somebody who is angry, his all our level of reception is higher. Number two, when you clothe somebody who is naked, Believe me, you, that is somebody you can win their confidence. Number three, strangers. Four, feasting the sick. Uh, five, feasting those who are in prison. Uh, refreshing the thirst. Disaster relief. And uh, those who are bereaved, you can just pay them a feast. So I think I want to rest it here. Not because I've done what I wanted to share, but because that is enough for you for, you, for, you for today. And because uh, this is a process we keep on learning each and every day. So this document is available for you if you want to learn more on how you can witness for Christ Jesus. So maybe be, before I leave the podium, is there any question from the floor? Any question or an input on the same? Is there any question? Okay, let's pray. Lord, we want to say thank you because of the reminder you have served us with that uh, we are supposed to be ready to witness for you and uh, one of the key motivating factor to us why we should witness for you it is because you have commanded us to and uh, number two it is because your second coming is very near my father help each and every one of us in this particular church and those who might be watching online that we might have uh, the urge the thirst of searching and seeking the roast. Give us one more chance that, Father, we may be reminded what we are supposed to do as a church and as individuals. And uh, the best way we can share our faith with our family members and with the world which is at the stake and which is at the point of breaking apart. Thank you because of this short reminder because we have asked all this in Jesus' name. Amen.